Snake's down throw, one of the most unique throws in the game. There are of course countless ways to follow up, but in this video, I'm going to focus on setups that maximizes option coverages instead of maximizing damage. Meaning, I'm not going to talk about solo reads, rather setups that can cover as many options as possible. I'll be discussing a lot of setups today, so I'll leave details and timestamps in a pinned comment below should you need to refer to anything I discuss in this video again. Let's first go over all the possible options the opponent has after the down throw. They can either roll behind, roll in front, get up attack, stand up, or wait. And most importantly, the higher the percent is, the longer they're forced to lay on the ground in a vulnerable state prior to being able to make an action. To be exact, the delay goes up by an increment of 3 frames every 50%. So at 0%, they're stuck for 3 frames. 50%, 6 frames. 100%, 9 frames. And 150%, 12 frames. Up to a maximum delay of 13 frames from 160% and onwards. But all you really need to know and remember are these three vital percentages. 108, 125, and 159. Anything above 108 after the down throw, Snake and Lana guaranteed jab. The jab will whiff, however, against characters who lay too low. For a reference, these are all the ones that jab will reach after 108%. Unfortunately, as you can see, not too many. But once they reach 125 and higher, forward tilt will start being guaranteed. And for the really thin characters, jab and forward tilt will just completely whiff. So here are all the ones that can and cannot be punished with forward tilt after 125. Though for a specific handful of characters, because of their laying down animation, forward tilt won't be guaranteed until after 142%. And for a few others, the percent depends on which side you do the down throw. And finally, up tilt is guaranteed at 159, and thankfully it works on all characters. There are actually some alternative options against the characters who are susceptible to down throw into jab after 108%. You can jab once, then true combo into a forward tilt. However, the timing between the jab and the forward tilt is very tight, and you'll only get a 1 frame advantage over the opponent after the jab, meaning if you forward tilt even just a bit too late, they can shield it. I would say it's only worthwhile going for this if you down throw them facing the ledge, close to the blast zone, since it can potentially get you an early kill. Though one small side note against Bowser Jr. is that the down throw will do about 2% more damage, meaning the 3 guaranteed follow ups against him specifically will work a tiny bit sooner. The reason is because Bowser Jr. takes more damage when you hit his head, and less damage when you hit his clown car, and the game counts down throw as hitting his head. Shulk on the other hand has some specifics too. When he has Buster and Jump Art activated, down throw into up tilt will work a bit earlier, at 155, and for Shield Art, a bit later, at 164. An important note is that if your down throw is stale, the guaranteed follow ups won't work until a bit higher. Pummeling can help compensate for the reduced damage of the down throw. And just a note, if you don't have C Stick already set to tilt for Snake, you totally should, as it'll make the setups I'm gonna discuss much easier to do. Okay, so with the guaranteed follow ups out of the way, let's get into lower percents. Anything below 10%, instead of a down throw, you should always go for a back throw into a dash attack, since it's guaranteed on most characters. As for reads, the first setup I want to discuss is sidestep. This covers 3 of the 5 getup options the opponent has roll behind, get up attack, and stand up. It won't cover forward roll. Or if they wait, then get up attack. After buffering the sidestep, there's only two visual cues you need to react to. If they're in front of you, jab or forward tilt. If they roll behind, forward tilt backwards. Some characters have farther rolls, in which case you have to down tilt. Although sidestep can cover three options, it's highly character and percentage dependent. What makes or breaks this setup is the type of get up attack the opponent has. There are two types, either they hit front first, then back, or back first, then front. The sidestep can only avoid the latter type, 
back, then front. The speed of the getup attack also matters. Sidestep can avoid faster getup attacks better than slower ones. For example, against Cloud, who has a hitbox that comes out slower, the sidestep will only work from 0 to 6%, which is basically useless. While up against a faster getup attack, like Pits, it'll work from 0 all the way up to 107, which is a very decent range. Now, staling sidestep does affect the setup, but you'd have to stale it a lot for it to matter, so it shouldn't be an issue in an actual match. Here's a list of characters and the percent ranges that this setup will work against. The forward tilt and down tilt means what you should do if the opponent rolls behind you after the sidestep. Though as I mentioned before however, this setup is susceptible if the opponent chooses to wait then attack. So let's talk about a setup that covers the waiting option. Obviously there are many attacks that can deal with this, but they're all susceptible to an immediate getup attack. Except for one, which is short hop down air. Immediately following a down throw, short hop down air covers three options. Get up attack, wait, and stand up. But not roll forward or roll behind. However, some get up attacks will nick your down air before you can get safely above them. Against these characters, this setup won't work until percent's a bit higher. Here's a list of characters and the percent when short hop down air will be able to cover the three options. It just won't work against DK and Falcon, since their getup attack simply hits too high. Now, what about covering four options? There are actually five characters, these five to be exact, who have such short forward rolls that Snake can actually cover four of their five getup options. It covers forward roll, getup attack, stand up, and if they wait. It just doesn't cover back roll. The percentages I put under the icons means when this setup starts working for said character. As you can see, it utilizes an instant reverse down air. Reversing the down air is necessary because the front hitbox reaches farther than the back part, allowing you to cover whatever they do on spot while still being able to cover the possibility of a forward roll with your heel. Though you must input the reverse down air immediately after the down throw too slow and you won't be able to cover the forward roll, or you might get nicked by the getup attack. Now this next setup is simple, involving just a dash back, but it's only guaranteed to cover two options, roll behind and getup attack. It won't cover forward roll, waiting, or standing. After the down throw, simply buffer a dash back. If they getup attack, dash attack. Some have getup attacks that reach really far, far enough that it'll catch your dash. For these characters, you can't use this setup until percent's a bit higher, so that they're delayed long enough that you can safely dash away. And here's a table of all the percents when Snake is able to dash away safely from the getup attack. Now, if they roll behind, you have quite a few options. Down air is the most universal one that works on everyone, except Isabel, because her roll is just too short. A faster option is Jab. It comes out two times faster than Down Air and works on most characters. However, some have rolls that are too short, in which case it's more reliable to forward tilt them backwards. At higher percents, up tilt is a good option to secure the kill, but again, it'll whiff against the short rollers unless you angle a turnaround up tilt. Though the most interesting follow up is definitely down tilt. Some characters will roll right into your character model. If you down tilt, they'll get nicked by the base of the move. This has a unique launch angle, sending them straight up. So at low percents, you can combo into a turnaround up tilt. At mid percents, a back air, which can net you an easy 40% off of one down throw, if they roll behind. Okay, so the only option that I haven't covered yet is forward roll. There's quite a few setups, but the most reliable is probably this option select method which involves this sequence of inputs. Dash forward, tap shield, then down tilt. Thanks to the huge input buffer window in Ultimate, this exact sequence can cover two options. Get up attack, and forward roll. Here's how it works. Let's say after the down throw, the opponent decides to do a forward roll. I dash forward, tap shield, and down tilt. They get hit pretty straightforward. 
But now let's say the opponent does a getup attack. The actual hitbox doesn't come out until about frame 15 on average. This gives me enough time to dash forward a bit. I tap shield after the dash, which protects me from the getup attack. Although I already let go of the shield button, the shield stun will keep my shield up. At this point, I've already inputted down tilt. Because of the long buffer window, the game will still register it at the very end. Just a note, keep holding forward after the dash. Let your shield cancel your dash. If you let go of forward, your shield will come out way too late. So all in all, one sequence of inputs that covers two options. At higher percents, the opponent's getup attack will be delayed, as I've mentioned earlier. So you need to dash just a bit further before tapping shield to compensate. This option select method isn't limited to down tilt. Against characters with short rolls, you can forward tilt. This is actually even easier since you just need to dash forward, tap shield, then mash A. At higher percents, you can use up tilt for the kill, but also only against short rollers. Dash attack is another option and is actually the most reliable against characters with far rolls. And the result of this option select is actually pretty interesting. So after the down throw, if they roll forwards, pretty straightforward. You dash forward, tap shield, then get them with a dash attack. Though if they did a get up attack, you again dash, tap shield, then dash attack. However, the input the game registers for dash attack actually translates into a forward tilt after you shield their get up attack. Based on the roll distances, here are the optimal punishes you should do for each character. As you can see, there are a few characters, however, who are immune to this setup because of the duration between the first hit of their getup attack and the second hit. It's long enough that the second hit will catch you after the shield stun wears off. Well, that's it for the option select method. Alternatively, another way is to short hop, then fast fall past them. This is easier, but it's character dependent. And again, it only covers two options though. For getup attacks that hit front, then back, after the down throw, short off forwards, then immediately fast fall. If they roll forward, forward tilt. If they did a getup attack, forward tilt backwards. It doesn't cover standing, waiting, or a back roll. Though an important note is that this setup is only reliable above about 50%. Any lower, you won't be able to punish the forward roll in time because they're not delayed enough. And here's a list of all the characters this setup will work against. The main reason why it doesn't work on this half of the roster is because their getup attacks hits back then front, which will unfortunately catch you before landing. Something else really interesting to point out is that this setup works like a charm with a grenade grab. After the down throw, again short hop over then fast fall. If they get up attack, hit them with only the first hit of forward tilt. It should combo into the explosion, which you can then follow up with an aerial. On the other hand, if the grenade is too cooked, you should just use your iframes to tank through the explosion, then punish. If they rolled forward, then you can't do anything with the grenade, so just punish them normally. Against Mario, Luigi, and Dr. Mario, there's a unique way of punishing get up attack and forward roll but it can only be done after a certain percent. 60 plus for Luigi, 90 plus for Mario and Dr. Mario. So right after the down throw, if you forward roll, you'll completely avoid their getup attack, at which point you can punish them with a dash attack or a down tilt. If they rolled forward instead, then punish with a forward tilt. Just to note, your roll can't be too stale or else the getup attack will catch you. Unfortunately, none of the forward roll setups I've discussed so far covers the standing option as well. So what we can do is run forwards a bit, then dash attack. Really simple, and it covers two options. Standing, and forward roll. It of course doesn't cover get up attack, back roll, and waiting. Though if the opponent waits a bit too long, the dash attack will catch them too. Now I want to talk about a couple interesting setups that unfortunately only works on a handful of characters, but they can cover 3-4 to four options and deal heavy damage. The first one is a short hop forwards, fast fall forward air, and it works on these 6 characters. It can cover a get up attack, forward roll, and standing. It doesn't cover waiting, 
and back roll. What I love about this setup is that you can follow up with an up tilt, up air, or neutral air, which can deal up to like 50 damage. This next one works on these 5 characters, and it can cover 4 options, but it only works at 50% or higher. For Bowser and King K. Rule, after the down throw, do a turnaround back air, then fast fall it. The back air isn't a strong punish by itself, but at mid percents, it launches the opponent on a low trajectory. If they miss the tech, you can jab lock them into a down air for massive damage. Because DK, Charizard, and Rob roll a bit further, you need to do a reverse back air instead, then fast fall it. Both the reverse back air and the turnaround back air need to be inputted as soon as possible, so I suggest using a tag cancel to do both, to ensure that they come out right after the down throw. This setup covers waiting, standing, get up attack, and forward roll. It just doesn't cover back roll. Now the major downside to both of these setups is the amount of landing lag you'll get from the back air and the forward air. If the opponent decides to wait or do a back roll, you'll likely eat a hefty punish. So it's a high risk but high reward option. Now if you manage to land a down throw facing near the ledge, forward roll becomes very punishable. The dash back setup I discussed earlier can cover virtually every option. Forward roll, get up attack, stand up, back roll, and if they wait, you can wait as well, until they choose an option. Unfortunately, if you down throw the opponent at the very, very edge, you won't be able to follow up with anything. And against some characters who have fast aerials or specials, they can actually hit you before you can even pull up your shield. So if you land a grab and your toe is kissing the ledge, it's best to just forward throw. One last thing I want to point out is that Snake has among the longest throw invincibility frames in the game, as you saw from all the green in the video. And using it to tank through your own grenades is very useful, but it's also great for team combo kill confirms. If you land a grab and your teammate is close by, they can run up and throw a smash while you down throw for a quick kill. It doesn't matter which side your partner does it, it'll work either way, so long as they hit them during your down throw animation. Now I know this is a boatload of information to take in for one video, which is why I compiled a Google document for you to easily check what works and what doesn't for any matchup you're facing. You can find a link in the description, simply use the search function or the outline bar to quickly look it up. For example, if you want to know what works against Young Link, find his name, then you can quickly see, oh, guaranteed jab doesn't work, but forward tilt and up tilt does. Down a bit, you can see there are two setups that cover three options and two options. Down throw sidestep works at 56% and lower, and down throw down air works from 30 and higher. Down throw dash back works at any percent, and if you decide to use the option select, you can see what the optimal punish is. I also put the frame at which the get up attack hitbox comes out for each character, so you can use that to gauge how fast you should pull up your shield after the dash. Frame 10 meaning that you need to pull up your shield as soon as possible, all the way to the slowest ones, frame 20, where you need to wait a tiny bit after the dash before shielding. Well, that's all I have for this video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.